in the news this week. Keir Starmer commits Labour to an all-encompassing conversion therapy law. The Met Police apologise after a volunteer officer tried to stop gospel singing in the street. And a rape victim explains why she chose life for her unborn child. Hello. Keir Starmer has threatened that the Labour government would introduce sweeping legislation on conversion therapy. Speaking at an event in Parliament to mark LGBT plus history month, the Labour leader pledged to implement a full trans inclusive ban on all forms of conversion therapy. He went on to claim conversion therapy is psychologically damaging abuse and accused the government of putting vulnerable people in danger by failing to introduce an all encompassing ban. Sir Keir also told the reception, organised by LGBT plus Labour, that the party would modernise the Gender Recognition Act and treat every category of hate crime as an aggravated offence. The government has pledged to bring forward a draft bill despite widespread concern it would criminalise parents and church leaders who uphold biblical sexual ethics. The Metropolitan Police has apologised after a volunteer officer told a gospel singer she could not sing Christian songs in public. Harmony London regularly sets up her keyboard and sings popular hymns and worship songs on Oxford Street, Central London, but on this occasion she was pressured to move. Religion you're allowed to do anywhere. No, miss, you're not allowed you are, to sing ch you uh, are, so church you are. songs outside of church grounds, by the way. You're not allowed to sing church songs outside, outside of... Outside of church, or church uh, songs or uh, church grounds. You're not allowed grounds. to... That's fine, that's You're not fine. allowed, she just said you're not allowed to sing church songs outside of church. Our church of, outside of church grounds, unless you have... a. Uh, and that's a load of rubbish. Authorized no, no. by the church to do this yes, kind of song. Yeah, not saying anything anymore. Thank Are you, you saying that you don't care about the Human Rights Act? You're lost. Hmm. Ah! The officer threatened to take away the singer's keyboard and equipment if she didn't stop. Harmony insisted she had a right to be there and that she was breaking no laws, but the officer's persistence meant she eventually felt she had no option but to move on. She told the Daily Mail she felt upset and humiliated by what happened. I'm 20, I'm a quiet person. Although I sing, I don't really like attention and that's not the sort of attention I seek. I felt very humiliated and small. I felt like my human rights didn't matter. A spokesperson for the Metropolitan Police apologized for the error. The officer was mistaken in saying church songs cannot be sung outside of church grounds. We're sorry for the offense caused and we'll take the learning forward. Harmony has now returned to Oxford Street following the incident and is continuing to share the gospel with passers-by through her music. The number of people seeking help for problem gambling rose by over 10,000 last year. More than 52,000 people called the National Gambling Helpline in 2023 asking for support or counselling, up from around 42,000 in 2022. Helpline advisors noted a particular spike during the festive period, adding that some addicts told them they struggled to watch television with their families due to the prevalence of gambling advertising. CI Deputy Director Kieran Kelly told Premier Christian Radio the government needs to address the root of the problem. A lot more needs to happen, particularly in this area of advertising. Advertising is what presents gambling to people as an attractive option. Um, it's always the kind of the win kind of scenarios that, uh, that get presented. You don't generally see a t television advert where someone is saying, um, I went to you know this betting company and I I lost loads of money. Come to them too. You know, advertising doesn't work that way. It's 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 set up to be attractive and to draw people in, and as we as we said, with dev often with devastating consequences. And finally, a mother who conceived a child after being raped in her mid-teens has encouraged other victims that abortion is never your only option. In an interview with Students for Life of America, 19-year-old Ayala Eisenberg emphasised that abortion has nothing to do with healing from the rape, and she had a message for women considering abortion in similar circumstances. I know what it feels like to be willing to do something you wouldn't normally be comfortable doing because you just need to escape, you need to stop being hurt like this. Um, but I would also say that the ramifications of losing that baby are going to last a lifetime. I would also say that when I was um, pregnant with Rachel, which is my baby's name, um, I saw a flyer for a crisis pregnancy center and it really helped me uh, realize there were people who wanted to help me like really desperately. And I would say that, you know, if you just reach out and ask for help, there are so many people, especially within the pro-life community, but in general, people do want to help you in this situation and you have to reach out and ask for it. Um, but I, I would say that you, you always have a choice. Well, that's all for this week. 
For regular updates and information on all of our stories, plus much more, visit our website at christian.org.uk. Until next time, goodbye.